Yo, yo, YouTube! It is Monday the 6th of November. I'm on my way home. Pretty, pretty good day. And really, it was non-stop. Um, it was a good start because I was dropping off a load that I picked up on Friday, first thing this morning. So I got myself from home to my first drop off at about five past eight. And once I dropped off, that was 50 pounds, just there, straight away at my eight o'clock. So I really like that uh, as a strategy. It's just difficult to get to where I live, to get loads on the way back or near where I live overnight. I'll look out for more, that more often. It was a really good, really good start to the day. Um, one note about my load, um, it was to a residential house. So I don't see why I couldn't have done it at any point over the weekend. Um, I could have delivered it, I'm sure, on a Saturday or Sunday. I would have been home. But it's not for me to question these things. So I did what I was told. Monday morning at 8 o'clock, there I was. And it was done. Then I was looking for a job. And this is where I got in a bit of a small pickle. Um, I was, I found a job that was going from Corby to, I think it was Bolton, it was quite a good job, I put a bid on, I think it was a, I think it was a medium wheelbase job, I can't quite remember, it was over a pound a mile, and I rang up the shipper, and they, and they said it hadn't come through yet, on the CX. Which I thought was a bit strange. I gave them a quote, told them who I was, and I said, How, Am I sort of in the ballpark of what you were looking for? And they said, Yes, I was, please get to contact with the customer first. So I was half an hour from this that pickup. Um, so I dropped off in Peterborough and I was sort of um, to the south, no, to the north west of Peterborough. And I thought, well, I'll head towards Corby and then just see if that job comes up. And it didn't, it, it disappeared. And then, so I stopped driving towards Corby. And I thought, well, what am I doing now then? I'm sort of five minutes out of Peterborough. Um, I, needed, I, I needed a job. I also needed, to, I needed, needed to, I needed the loo as well, which is the main thing. I was a bit stoked for that. But uh, I thought, where can I go to a supermarket? And I looked around, and there was a, a the closest one really was going to Stamford. It was about uh, seven miles away, eight miles away. If I go to Stamford, it keeps me the west side of Peterborough, it gets me north of Peterborough. I like looking for jobs north of Peterborough. And if all else failed, it's getting me close to home. So I chose to do that, got on the A1M north and as I was doing that a job came through that was an urgent job going from Peterborough to Spalding and it was a job that was for a long wheelbase van um, it's about 22 miles and I'd bid 50 pounds as my minimum so I just turned off the A1M went past RF Wittering if you know the area big loop back to Peterborough back on the A47 and then I was, um, I was on the right side of Peterborough, I was picking up from Hulu's Merchants. Um, so I picked up that load and made my way to, it wasn't actually Spalding, it was actually um, sort of to the east of Spalding, a place called Wop Load. Um, it, was a, it was a housing estate. Oh yes, this is, <laughs> yes. Oh, housing. Housing developments. This particular shipper that I got the job from, I, I knew what it was because they always have short jobs in my area, going from builders merchants to um, sort of housing developments. And I picked it up because it was a, a good price and it was close to where I was, and it wasn't taking me very far away. And yeah, it was it was money. It was a job. But other than that, it was not 
I don't like doing those jobs. And if you're new, if you're not, if you're not new, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But if you're new to this work, here are the downsides to going onto a building site, from my experience. So the first thing was today, it was really, really muddy. And I tried to stay on the main road and the instructions of you weren't clear. I rang the guy and he gave me some instructions that weren't that clear. I ended up going on site. And the mud must have been about six inches deep at places. Really sloppy in the mud. And I had to turn my van around and I'd offload it. And uh, it was a bit tight and all very muddy and I, I thought I might have got stuck on the mud. Okay, so the first reason is building sites are very messy places to go to. The second reason why I don't like them is I often got a handball of the thing off. So even if it's put on a pallet, it wasn't today, today it was all uh, loose items. But if I've got a pallet put on to my vehicle, there's very rarely, in my experience, on the sites that I go on, a forklift driver to take it off. So you've got to uh, break up the pallet and handball everything off into whatever house they're meant for from the, the building. Um, and if there's only you and the person contact, it can be quite a lot of work. Third reason I don't like doing this is the people that work on those sites, in my experience, are not the happiest bunch. And they're not the most helpful bunch. And I suppose if I'm going to be um, cruel, is that the word? I don't want to be cruel for the sake of it, but I think it's true, in my experience. They're not the cleverest bunch. So you're there trying to deliver stuff, and you'll have the site manager being very officious about the whole thing, wearing your, wear your hard hat and park us at a place and X, Y, Z. And then you've got everyone else who just doesn't really give a, doesn't really care. And then the fourth reason is, if I'm often given a contact number and name on my notes, which usually is really helpful. But most of the time when I ring the number, it doesn't get answered. I always ring it 15 minutes before I arrive on site, because it's often quite hard, sometimes it's hard to find where the site is, if it's a building site. And then I'll not get an answer, so I'll ring again five minutes before, and then I'll ring again if I'm on site. And I'll be lucky if I get an answer. And then if I get an answer, I'm also lucky the person is actually on site. Today, the person answered eventually, said he wasn't on site, gave me another number for someone who was on site, or the or in the office. And he was just not interested in me talking to him about the delivery at all. So why I had his number, I do not know. So, the whole experience, and also, also, I suppose, to be fair, another reason, number five, it takes a lot longer, in my experience, to, to, to offload to a building site than it does anywhere else. With maybe the exception of a hospital and um, maybe sort of a retail unit, where you've got to try and read where the big sites. But for, for the fact that they're quite small sites often, getting on and off them is quite awkward and take time consuming, getting stuff loaded on and off is quite time consuming. So it took me around about, by the time I got there, it took me about 20 minutes to get these few things handballed off because I, I was going to, it was for one reason or another. So that was me summarising why I don't particularly like going to um, building sites. Sometimes they're okay, but usually they're one or more of those problems I've just outlined. outlined. And what made it worse today was that I found a job from a shipper that uses me quite a lot, a local shipper to me, uh, five minutes before I arrived. I put a bid on and I had to go and pick that up before 10.40. And it was in West Beach, which was around about a half an hour away from where I was. So I put the bid on, got it accepted, and then I was trying to get the words offloaded and get off in time to get to my next load. By the time I got off site, I had 40 minutes spare and a half an hour journey. So I had 10 minutes spare in the end. So I was okay in the end. But what made it more difficult for me was that at 
the same time as I arrived and I was trying to get myself offloaded on this building site and then thinking about getting to my next job on time, I had a call come in from a shipper from another job that I closed on that was going from Lincoln to Atterbury, Norfolk. And I couldn't do that and the one with my shipper, but also I couldn't answer the phone because I was too busy trying to offload my stuff. So I had to let the phone ring through and it rang through twice and um, I just couldn't answer it. So at least I know that my bid on that job was successful. I know to bid next time that job comes up. Um, so I think I told you my bid for this job was fifty pounds for twenty-two miles. Um, I did ring the shipper back who called me and apologised and explained why I couldn't take the call and he explained that he'd covered the load, which was I was pleased about. Um, I just did it out of courtesy really because. I didn't want him to think that he was calling me and I just didn't bother answering the phone. Um, I very rarely did answer the phone with his work number, uh, but I just felt that I had to call him back and explain why I couldn't pick it up on that occasion. And I think he understood why I was calling and I think um, it was the right thing to do. So, what was next? So, I've got, I'm getting myself, so I, I'm trying to um, upload the pod. Um, I, was, I wasn't given any paperwork apart from one piece of paperwork that I had to get signed by the, um, the builder and then to take a photo of the paperwork for me because he wanted to keep the physical copy himself. So I was doing all that, trying to upload it onto CX. The invoicing bit didn't work today, so I just then left that and made my way towards Quiz Beach. And once I'd. Um, yeah, I must, I'm going to share this with you. It's a bit irrelevant, but it just. I, I want you to kind of try and get put this up in my head. I was quite stressed with missing the phone call, trying to get to Whiz Beach, this messy site with, with getting loaded. And I got into the van and I put my phone in its cradle and it fell down, the phone fell off its cradle, the phone and cradle fell on the floor. And I swore like a trooper at that point. Um, it just got really quite, very quickly, I go, I don't swear at people, that's not, me, but if I'm on my own and I'm frustrated, to get the frustration out, I will swear, and and I go from a sort of calm to swearing quite quickly because my brain gets overwhelmed really quickly. So today was one of those days where when my phone fell on the floor, and I had my um, door slightly open, and it fell out on the on the on my step out of the out of the van, and my cradle fell down. I thought I just felt this is so frustrating. I'm trying to be in a rush here, trying to get to my next job. Nothing's going right. Six isn't working. This is falling down. Ah! Anyway, once I've got that done, I calmed down and I made my way in a nice sunny day towards Wish Beach with 10 minutes to spare. By the time I got there, I had five minutes to spare because of the traffic. Um, but I knew where I was going. I'd been there before. You know, the guys are really nice as long as you know, don't, as long as you don't break the rules. And uh, I got myself a pallet from them. So I was there on time, I had to wait for a little bit, and then I was off site, um, about sort of 11-ish, I would say, maybe about a bit before. Oh, and that's when I got to use the toilet, hooray! Because <laughs> that was desperate at that point, and they've got to put it on site, so I used that while I was waiting. And then my day was perfect. So now, having had quite a hectic start to my day, it was all kind of settling into place. So I made my way to, I was going to Grimsby, um, the job that I was doing was um, 81 miles in a medium wheelbase. It was for a medium wheelbase van. I bid £90 and it was about a two hour journey. I was due to be there about five past one, um, according to Sennav. So I took my one pallet, strapped it down, um, and then made my way towards Grimsby. Um, Driver's very nice. Um, it was Quite easy, quite a nice day, quite relaxing, and this was my third. Remember, this was my third paying job of the day, so uh, it was quite a nice feeling. Feel that by midday, I would have got most of my money for the day. I needed to get uh, another to be two little jobs or one medium-sized job to make my target. So I got to Grimsby, got to the factory that I was delivering to. Um, it was a bit confusing because I didn't know where to go. The security guard wasn't very helpful. I asked the forklift driver, he told me where to go. I wasn't quite certain what he meant. 
that's another one and do a third where I had to go. So I parked up, waited for a bit, and then they came and uploaded me. So I was then done by about half past one and I was waiting. Um, I went and waited, I went to the local Lidl, which was just around the corner from where I was, and uh, pulled up and had a look at jobs. And within about two minutes, a job came up from where, from Grimsby going to Scunthorpe and Leeds. I thought that was an amazing good job. So I had a quick calculation. It was a, a stop a stop in the middle. Um, it was 81 miles and I put on 90 pounds. This is a quick job. Uh, try, get, try and get it. Um, and I was five, five minutes, no, eight minutes from the pickup. So very close, no dead miles. And I got the job. Um, the guy that rang me, uh, I'd, wrote, I'd, I'd worked for these shippers before, and I'm going to tell you a little story here. Um, I'm hoping they're not listening to this. I'm assuming they don't because they're listening today when I rang them. But I was trying to do the right thing. It ended up not really working. But yeah, it didn't really work. Um, but then I ended up benefiting from it. It's weird. It's a weird situation. If you've listened to all my videos, you may remember way back, a couple of months ago, I did a job from, I think it was from Lincoln to um, Newark, I think, something like that. At the end of a Friday, I didn't really want to do it. And I put up it on 55 pounds. I said to the job, 50 pounds, pay 50 pounds only. And I got that job. And along the way, I thought, I feel like I've done I'm, I'm taking advantage here, this person. It sounds like a nice person. So I thought, when, when I get to the other end, I'll tell them I'll do it for £50, pounds, not the 55 that we at start, because I don't really need the extra fiver. It, feel, it felt like it was too much for the job I was doing. So I got to the other end, told them, and then they just said, oh, don't worry about it, we'll pay 55 And I said to them at the time, if I get another job from you, I'll take off a fiver. And then I forgot about it, because <laughs> obviously that's what you do. Over the weekend, I was doing my pods um, and invoicing, and I saw a note that I wrote to myself about that five pounds, and I recognised the name of the shipper that I did it with. And I've done three jobs for that shipper, that first one and two others since then. And I thought, oh, I remember that name. The next time I do a job, I'll say that, I'll, I'll take five off. And would you believe it, the job from Groomsby to Scunthorpe to Leeds was that shipper. So I said, before I took this job, I said to them, about two months ago, I said that I'd pay you back a five the next time I got a job. And so I'm going to do that today. But today, take out a five from your quote, your quote and, um, and I'm happy to do it for five or less. And they, they agreed, and that's it. And I thought, brilliant. Um, we've, we've, we've been there. I've, I've done my little bit of um, you know, paying back, paying forward or paying back my, my good fortune. I must say, before I say that, we'd agreed a different price as well. The price we'd agreed was £110 because when they called me, they said to me there was two extra stops. So in total there was um, five pickup stops and then one drop-off stop. No, four? No, four pickup stops and one drop-off stop. So I thought there was two stops and it was actually four to pick up. So they did a ten of each stop on, so from my 90 minutes to 10. I thought it was very fair, I thought it was good. And then I said, oh, take a fiver off that because of what I did before. Came off the phone, made my way to my first drop. I thought, oh, I better just double check that they've got the right price on there. I looked at the price, it was £115. They put on a fiver. <laughs> and I thought, oh, what can we do here? <laughs> I'm trying to do the right thing. I'm trying to sort of, you know, do that. And I, I, for some reason, they think I was asking for an extra five pounds, or five pounds less. And so I'm giving, I'm giving up. I can't, I can't ring now and explain what I really meant was taking five off. I'm going to sound like, a, sound like an idiot. Sound like a, uh, do you know, it's not going to sound good. So I'll just leave it for now. And except it's a mistake in my, in my, in my um, advantage. So I'm now wondering, next time I get dropped them, do I take off, take off £10? 
So that job involved um, getting to going to uh, a couple of places in Grimsby, place in Ingingham, Ibingham, and place in Scunthorpe, it all pick up, and then drop all off all the items in a central place in Leeds. And I thought, well, if I get to Leeds before five, I've got a good chance of getting another job. Because it's a good area, Leeds. I haven't yet managed to get a job from Leeds itself. I've been, I've got past it a lot, but today is a good chance to get a job. So I went to my first job, I was there for about two o'clock. They weren't ready for me. They said that usually um, they do the drop pickups at two, quarter past two. So I left to wait, which I was happy to do. But today the, the guy was later than usual. It was more like half past two, so I got loaded it off. So I was already a bit behind uh, after my first stop. So I did all the stops. Um, and by the time I'd lo offloaded it in Leeds, with the, what with the traffic and the stopping and starting, I didn't finish until six o'clock. Um, so it's basically a four hour job, that was. And I got £115 for a 115, which I think is about fair. If I, was to, if I was to base it on my time, I want £30 an hour. So four hours of that is £120. So I'm not too far off, basically on time. So I'm okay with that. And it was a nice, easy. It was an easy run. I'd do the job again. It was. It's. Uh, Something that happens quite regularly, as far as I'm aware. Right. So obviously at Leeds, I was looking at what to do next. Now I do have a job booked in the morning from Lincoln at uh, eight o'clock. I was booked from last week. So, I, I did bid on a couple of jobs. Um, one was going from um, Le Leeds to Lancaster, back to Leeds at 7.30. Another 7.30 job was going from Leeds to North London, uh, East London. Uh, no, uh, I'd, I'd call it North London, run it on the map. It was an E4, E14 post code. There's another job going from Leeds, no, Huddersfield to Swindon. And I was tempted to bid on all of them, but it would have made my day very long. Well, I've been on a couple of them. I've been on a couple of them. Um, I would have made my day a lot very long, and I would have been nowhere near home at the end of it. So I decided in the end, I had to look at my stats. I put in the mileage to get home and the time, and I worked out that I'm not going to quite make my target today if I dead by at home, but it's close enough. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to dead mile at home. Get to stick my own bed to have my lovely partner, and um, and all will be well in the world. In the world. So I wanted to say about today, I'm really impressed with the strategy of delivering first thing in the morning. So you already got on board. I'm going to try and do more of that if I can, because that would make today start off really well. I did four jobs, and um, I'll give you my stats now. Um, Obviously, yeah, also the other thing I was going to say today is, as far as I'm aware, my regular job that I had going is stopped. Um, I've not had it for the last couple of weeks, um, so I'm pretty sure now that that's no longer going to be um, available for me. So all my work at the moment is CX work only, just work that I get by bidding on a CX system. So. Today, when I get home, oh, I've just filled up with fuel as well. Literally about four. Well, as I started this video, four or seven video, I filled up with some fuel. So I've got a new price for fuel. It's come down very slightly, so I'm pleased with that. My average pence per mile for fuel this week, based on my one fill up so far, is 16.07 pence per mile that I drive. I've driven today 369 miles, 369. And I will have worked when I get home 13 and a half hours. 
my cost of fuel today based on that mileage and that cost is going to be 59 pounds and 32 pence so 59 pounds they do and my gross earnings today from four cx jobs is 305 pounds that's based on the 50 pounds from dropping off in peterborough from what i picked up yesterday on friday in northampton 50 pounds from peterborough to Warp, uh, well Wop load, I'll say, it's east of Spalding. Ninety pounds to go from Wisbeach to Grimsby, and one hundred and fifteen pounds after all that story to go from Grimsby to Scunthorpe to Leeds. So, in my mind, I have a rough figure now that three hundred pounds before fuel is what I'm aiming to get each day. So, three hundred and five pounds. Take off the fuel, my money I've earned today after fuel is £246.246 which is £4 less than my target. So for the sake of the dead miles I'm going to do which is about 100, 100 dead miles to get home I'll sacrifice that money to get home um, after, after today and have a pleasant evening and start again tomorrow. Right, uh, let's bring this to a close. So, I am grateful for something you might find a bit strange today, but it's genuine. Over the, yesterday, I did my um, did my accounts for the end of last month, and I was chasing up people that had not paid their invoices on time. And I had six invoices that were not paid. Um, I sent out emails um, to all of them and I rang one today and I sent out the emails and sent out some letters yesterday as well. Um, the letters would have been when they had requested physical copies and I hadn't done that or the jobs I did last week for the physical copies of the pods. So some of the delays were because I didn't do what they asked for, but most of them were because they just didn't pay for any reason. And what I'm grateful for is today, I've had responses from four of those six people. Two of them paid today, the other two said they were gonna pay within a week. And I'm grateful for the fact that they have responded so quickly to my requests for the payments. I don't want to be wasting my time chasing people in my, so far, two companies have gone gone off the CX having owing me money, and that feeling is horrible. So the feeling of someone paying you your money or agreeing to pay you your money when you've asked for it, even this late, I still find that a gratifying thing. So I'm going to thank those four shippers that did respond immediately to my request for my outstanding invoices and I think there were genuine reasons I'm going to assume there were genuine reasons why they weren't paid on time so part of the process as a driver is to send out reminders just in case the invoices have gone astray either between or actually at the place the shipper's place so I don't feel too bad about it now that I've replaced that uh, check and it's paid off. Right, thank you very much for listening. I hope that you are all successful in however you define the word successful. And have a think about what you are grateful for today.